Hello and welcome back. It's a bit parky in here tonight. That should do the job. So I'm making a little video because I've been asked by two different people now. Chris, I've just bought a lathe. How have you wired up your controls to the inverter? So I thought, rather than explaining it, I'll make a little video on it. But it does mean dragging the lathe out to get to the back. But that's, that's fine. I don't mind doing that. Also, unfortunately, the dehumidifier is packed up. And I do need to get that sorted. Because if, that if that's not running, it won't be long before the inside of here looks like the Titanic. So that's never good. Let's get back to the main video. The controls. Now, when I first bought my Colchester, unfortunately, it came with a single phase, three horsepower motor, that when you plugged it in, it blew all the electrics. So that was no good at all. So I had to scratch my head, and a bit of reading up, realised that I needed a three phase motor, but I don't have three phase electricity. So, I had to plug in one of these, a verbal frequency drive. As you can see, the 240 goes in, It then go exits to the motor, which is in the depths of the lathe. But to get really clever, instead of working the controls on the box, which is quite dangerous if you've got to reach over, you can wire up the original controls, which is very sexy. And this is the safety lock handle. That's, that starts her up. Notice the spindle rotation because very sexily you can also rig up the fingertip reverse. Very nice. Now wouldn't you want that on your lathe? So let's see how it was done. We're now at the back of the Colchester and you can see the electrical box which is controlled by the safety lock handle through a series of levers through the body of the lathe. As you can see it's a very very simple affair. The same handle if you depress it is also a spindle brake and you may just be able to see the mechanism working. There we go. That operates some brake shoes which slows in the spindle. Very interesting. Next to the electrical contactor box, we have the bevel switch, which controls the fingertip reverse. And we'll open that up too. I'll go through my wiring quickly, but your inverter may be different. So as you can see, one and two is burn and blue. And it does rhyme, that's why I did it. <laughs> On the yellow and green is CM1. So we've got one and two, burn and blue. So underneath where the motor is, you have to excuse me, it's a bit awkward. We can see blue and brown and yellow. The blue and brown are both connected to little black wires as you can see. And these little black wires are in the tumbler reverse switch here. As you can see, two go in and then one comes out to the and then it exits to a red wire. Now that red wire then goes to oh god goes to yellow which is there and that's the circuit basically, that's the control circuit and it gives you a rough idea what you got to do so I hope that was of interest to you and I'm stuck behind the lathe interestingly I found this old piece of pipe I was looking for. I've not seen that for ages. I'll dig that out in a minute. 
And there you go, that's pretty much the end of that video. It gives you a rough idea of how to connect the control circuit to the controls of the lathe. And I hope somebody who's not quite sure, it gives them a better idea now that my job is done. And whilst I was on the back of the lathe, I found this. This is also, check for spiders, this is also electrical fire-rated ducting I got off a job. And it's very, very important to the lathe this because I can now Play you out. come back again. Oh, my bloody lips are tingling. Similarly, similar, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> similarly, similarly, the, <laughs> the finger trip 